reminisce about things that me and my producer was talking about earlier this week. We decided to put it on. I like to just pray that peace is upon your families and they will go in and travel with their loved ones. Today was the day that it was a city of travel and good music. And that peace is upon those who are incarcerated. We were talking about being a neutron inside a prison. And he, he pointed he pointed out some some things to me that I was able to uh, express about because I was a neutron and I did 20 something years being a neutron even though a lot of times uh, gang members tried to you know to get me to join the gangs and I was called Dre Dog. A lot of bloods thought I was bloods. And, but I wasn't. I used to tell them I'm original Dre Dog from the 70s. <laughs> and they used to laugh at that. But being a neutron in prison ain't easy. Just like to a sense, to me right now, being a neutron out here is not easy. I look at a lot of gang members out here on how they have help from one another. And I, I feel to a degree that if, if I was affiliated, that I wouldn't have the kind of struggles that I have, but I'm Neutron, and I'll be a Neutron for life. But I was asking myself, and this question was really is really pointed out to those who are out there now that's not in games. Do you think you make it? If you had a 50-year sentence or a life sentence, being a Neutron, because being a Neutron in prison, like I say, is not easy. And, I, and I, I can reflect on a time when I was on the Alfred Hughes unit, and that was this black guy. He had snitched on this uh, white guy. And I think the white guy was, I think, uh, a wood or something. And the white guys that the white guys that was in the game with took it up on their own initiative to uh, jump on the black guy and whip him. One of the reasons because he was a neutron, and they whooped the boy up pretty bad. So now at this time on this unit, the uh, Mandingo Warriors practically ran the unit. It was so much of them, so it was a bunch of them. And one thing the Mandingo Warriors didn't, they they weren't gonna have a white boy whooping a, a black guy. I don't care what he was. I don't care if he was a crip or a blood or whatever he was. That's just something you're not gonna do. White boys especially. Uh, Spanny too. Spanny wasn't going to jump on no black dude. I don't care what he did. They might jump on him. But the unit's going to get locked down because them black dudes, them Mandingo warriors are going to ride with, the Crips are going to ride with the Mandingo, the Bloods are going to ride with the Mandingo, and if you was a black neutron, you was going to ride with the rest of them. And if, and, and if, you, if that take place, then, you know, Hispanic or uh, uh, white is outnumbered. So, they took it up on their own initiative to, uh, to jump on the guy. So the Mandingos and, 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 and all the other ones, they, they, they dominated them white boy. I'm talking about smashed them. But the conversation arrived after the event. Everything took on the reason why the white guys jumped on the black guy because he snitched on the white boy on, on the wood. But it, it didn't, the black dudes didn't see it that way. They feel like if if he had done it, which he did, then they should have came to, to among any one of them kind of games, black games, to find out first if he was involved, if, if he was affiliated, and and even if he was neutron, they would have went and violated it themselves because it just don't look right. Well, you do that. White boys just didn't do that. They just didn't, you know, take it up on their own initiative to, to uh, jump on no black guy. That that causes a, a, a hell of a ride, a real ride. Just some things white boys just didn't. And even right now today, you know, I don't care if, if, if the white boys outnumber the, uh, the blacks on a unit. They just not going to do it because, you know, it, when, when them black guys... When they come together, it's just something about the strength of it. It's just something about the strength, and I don't care who they go against. Is they gonna, they gonna, they gonna, 
they're going to dominate anything they go against. And I'm talking about the institution, inside these institutions. And But neutrons have a lifestyle that they have to live also when they're in prison because they, they are neutrons. And a lot of neutrons just don't come together, you know, like that. I was on Robinson Union and all. Uh, I said I was neutron, and, and, and I was I was in a circle of guys, and we was at that H town, and there was a lot of H town guys, and a lot of us were neutron. So we 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 bonded together, you know, we 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 did things together, and and we had to because we knew we was outnumbered towards as you know being neutrons, and but we had respect, we had a lot of respect because. It, it, we we gonna get down, like I say, when 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 we, when you figure it out and come together, you know, it's strength in it, you know. And then we just we didn't disrespect nobody. We respected all gangs, and and it just was some things you weren't gonna do to us, and it was some things we weren't gonna do to them. But you know, it, it's a question to ask yourself. You know, do you think you can make it if you had a life sentence and use a neutron? On, you know how. How would you go into a, a gang affiliated unit being a neutron? And this is what took place to me. Because I was on Telford, I was on Robinson, I was on McConnell, I was on uh, uh, Styles. I was on a bunch of units that had a lot of gangs. But one thing enabled me to be able to really get along is, is that the game I was in, and I was in the game of having women officers, tobacco, dope, and all these type of things. So by being in that manner and being in that position, uh, I dealt with all gangs. I dealt with everybody, Hispanic. I dealt with white boys. I dealt with everybody because I was, I was in a position where I was able to move from one farm, side of the farm to the other. I was dealing in cans of tobacco, which was the main selling product on, on it basically all units so I, I I've always had myself in that position where I was being respected only because not because I was Dredal but because what Dredal was doing the things that I was moving so you know at, at one time when I was on East Ham you know to to to, to get that amount of type of backer you had to come to me so I dealt with a lot of white boys because the white boys that was in the crowd shop they smoked a lot of weed and I, and I used to sell ounces. So that enabled me to be able to communicate with the white boy was on a larger level that a larger level that was in the craft shop. Them boys were making money. So I was getting a piece of their money. And but being a neutron ain't easy. Reaching out for help, you know, I'm out here and I'm reaching out for help and, and, and still I feel like a neutron. But I'm okay with that. Because my, my 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 struggle every day is it strengthens my goal for you. It strengthens my goal for just release. And, and and I know that I made it doing a 45 aggravated year sentence, being a neutron, and I made it. And there's so many other people that's probably was in my same position that made it. But I look at the situations I had found myself in in prison, being a neutron. Not just getting ran over because you couldn't run over Dre Dog. Dre Dog was too well respected and too liked. Too many people liked it, man. That was in games. See, because, see, if I did something that violated somebody, then you're going to have to go talk to somebody about Dre Dog. You just ain't going to go drunk Dre Dog. You just weren't going to do and I and, I and I'm really thankful for that. I really am, and I'm not bossing about that or anything in that nature. It's just that the position that I keep myself in. It wasn't too many times where I just kept myself in red. I used to run parlay. I remember I used to run parlay. And I found not myself one time. I paid the wrong guy the first place. Because another guy had the same name. No tickets. So the guy, he would invest the money because he knew he hadn't even much hit. But I paid him the money. Instead of finding out first between the two, I went on to pay the thing that was this guy. Being that, like I said, the game I was in and, and, and the circle of guys I kept myself around, it was easy for me to pay that other money back. To the person that originally won't want space, I'm just making money off follies. I just got to be here. I made a living off of uh, making wine and, and selling cigarettes and stuff like that. I made a real good living like that in prison. And I did it for a long time until I finally figured out that doing those things really was hindering me from making parole because uh, I 
I kept myself in trouble, but I always kept myself where I was able to be able to get out of trouble. So I actually just went, do you think you can make, if you had life sentence and use a neutron? Huh? This is Andre Wade with Just Release, and I'll be back with you.